Hello, and welcome to Musings on a Galaxy. There were a few mistakes and omissions in the original version of this episode so I have updated it. That's the problem with ME, it comes with frustrating brain fog. I have kept the original version up, but this is the better version. Think of it as a special edition if you will, depending on your opinion of those films. So, Star Wars. At Celebration 2023, three new movies were announced. Two sound really interesting, but I'm not really convinced about the third. Let's start with the promising ones. First, from James Mangold, there's a Dawn of the Jedi movie, taking place 25,000 years before A New Hope. Interestingly enough, when I was thinking up ideas for what kind of Star Wars story I would like to tell, one was the birth of the Jedi. Who were the first Force users? How did they use this power? How did the Sith come to be? It's said that the film will be like a biblical epic, and we know that Jedi is a religion in the Star Wars universe. Tarkin himself said Vader was the last of their religion in the very first film, after all. So I think there's a lot of potential there. Of course, the bigger question is how much creative freedom Lucasfilm will grant Mangold. Will he be allowed to tell the story his way, or will Kathleen Kennedy turn it into yet another too many cooks situation, spoiling the broth? There's been a lot of talk about that apparently having happened on episode 9, and directors were replaced on Solo in episode 9, with the entire final act of Rogue One having been reshot by Tony Gilroy, so let's hope lessons have been learned. While Mangold did have a few story issues with Logan, it was overall a very good film. As he recently made Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, I hope the fact that he's getting the chance to direct a Star Wars film is a vote of confidence in his ability. Of course, that could all change if Indiana Jones 5 isn't well received. Remember when Ryan Johnson was getting a whole Star Wars trilogy to himself before Episode 8 released, and was recently confirmed as being shelved after the poor reception of that film? Plenty of Star Wars projects have been announced then cancelled, so we're in the unfortunate position that just because we're told something is being made, that doesn't necessarily mean it is. The second, and particularly interesting sounding movie, is coming from Dave Filoni. Finally, after joining Lucasfilm to helm the Clone Wars CG animated movie and series, learning from Lucas himself, and getting experience by directing episodes of The Mandalorian, he gets to helm a live action film. And it's going to be the culmination of everything introduced in The Mandalorian show, along with its spin-offs, The Book of Boba Fett and Ahsoka, bringing to a climax the building conflict between the New Republic and the Imperial Remnant. As much as I don't like the sequel trilogy, in many ways these shows are working hard to redeem them, so hopefully it can work and bring a sense of cohesion that the sequel trilogy sorely lacks. Of course, this does raise questions. Will The Mandalorian get a proper series ending, or a cliffhanger that leads into the movie? There's talk of Ahsoka getting a second season if the first is well received, but I haven't heard anything about the book of Boba Fett getting a second season. I don't know whether one was potentially planned and scrapped. I've seen several people online saying they didn't like that show due to Boba's character growth, but for what it's worth, I enjoyed it, and I thought Tem did a great job. It's entirely possible that Boba will reappear in Mondo at some point down the line, but we just need to wait for Din to return to Tatooine, or for some quest to require Boba to travel off-world, similar to the Obi-Wan series. And now, the third movie, the one I'm rather unsure of. The potential disaster in waiting. Daisy Ridley returns as the controversially named Rey Skywalker in a new Jedi Order movie. Hmm. Now I don't mind Daisy. She did a decent job of playing Rey, who was unfortunately very underdeveloped and badly written. But this is coming off the back of episode 9, which barely crossed the billion mark at the box office, the end of a trilogy that made rapidly diminishing returns. A billion might sound like a lot, but if episode 9 had a production budget as high as $416 million, as is suggested online, then it didn't make a lot of profit, and it looks especially bad when episode 7 made just over 2 billion four years prior. And to make matters worse, the film will apparently look to adapt the original novels, which of course featured Luke Skywalker. To me, this sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, but I hope I'm wrong. It's being directed by Charmin Obeyed Chinoy, who has over 20 years experience directing, so hopefully she can deliver. But again, will Lucasfilm trust her enough to let her get on with it without interference? The way I see it, unless Lucasfilm gives this new Jedi Order film a lower budget of around 100 to 200 million, which might be possible if they use the volume, its chances of turning a profit at the box office are very slim indeed. While there are some fans keen to see more films in this era, 
I must admit, I'm not one of them. And Solo proved that just because a film has the Star Wars name attached, it isn't the guaranteed moneymaker it used to be. Indeed, the reason there hasn't been a Star Wars film since Episode 9 is because Disney eventually admitted to mishandling the property, releasing too many films in too short a time frame. It took George Lucas 28 years to complete his six-film saga. Disney pushed Lucasfilm to release five in just over four years. Star Wars films should be events, something special to anticipate and enjoy many times over. I've seen episodes one through six too many times to count, but I've only seen episodes seven and Rogue One three or four times each, and episodes eight and nine, and Solo, once each. And despite having reprised the role of Qui-Gon for the Obi-Wan series, Liam Neeson said in an interview that he turned down an invite to play the character again after that, saying, there's so many spin-offs of Star Wars. It's diluting it to me, and it's taken away the mystery and the magic in a weird way. I think that depends on what the project was. If it was about Qui-Gon teaching Obi-Wan how to pass into the Force, then I think he's right. Certain mythical aspects of Star Wars are known to the creators. Dave Filoni knows the intent behind the Clone Wars Mortis story arc, but deliberately won't tell fans because he wants people to interpret it in their own way. As frustrating as I personally find that as a fan who wants to know everything about George Lucas's vision of the Force, I guess allowing people to take it how they want is a great way to make Star Wars feel personal to every fan. But feel if the new Jedi Order film underperforms, which feels inevitable, Lucasfilm will use it as an excuse to cancel the two, better sounding movies. It has a release date of December 2025, which isn't very long to make a Star Wars film. A mistake already made on the sequel trilogy. But Kathleen Kennedy claims these films have all been in production for some time, though of course what she means by that is unknown. All we can do is wait and see what gets released, and how well it is, or isn't, received. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. I have many more ideas yet to come. Thank you for listening.